Greetings, Marsh here, and welcome to episode 56 of my modded Factorio playthrough. Enjoy. And one thing we can do with the circuit network is make a sort of visual level diagram, if that makes any sense, or level indicator. We basically have the storage chest, but we don't know how much is in it just by looking at it. Now, you kind of know how much stuff is in the stock um, liquid containers but because you can see there's a level right there so you can tell that it's pretty full but even then it's kind of hard to see can't really tell unless you hover over it and even then it's not the easiest thing in the world so in in spirit of having the factory be easier to run we can do a series of lights to show how full the tank is or how full the silo is and we could use as many lights as we want how about four indicator lights seems pretty straightforward I mean you could do this any way you want let's go to logistics and then there's the circuit network items oh am I completely out of uh, I am or did I just not hmm? I guess I just randomly ran out at just the right time. I had the feeling I might have dropped them somewhere of the uh, circuit boards. Well, let's grab another stack. So there's different things. Now, I'm not really, honestly, all that good at the circuit network. I can do some basic stuff, but I'm not really good at programming, doing crazy stuff. But uh, I'll just build one of these each and kind of show you what they all are for. So they require electricity to run. So the arithmetic one, basically you put a signal in, whatever signal it happens to be, and then you can perform math on the signal and change the signal. So depending on how you have your logic set up, that could become very useful. This right, right here is the decider. This one you probably use the most often. Basically, you just look for a certain parameter that comes in a signal, and then if it meets what you want, you can have a certain output. And this kind of does the same thing as just changing the signal like on the inserters we did before. We just manually uh, change the signal directly on the inserter, but you can do the same thing with one of these. So it's kind of similar to that. The constant combinator is interesting. It just puts out a single signal of whatever you want it to be. The power switch you might use fairly often. Um, basically, you can use the circuit network to turn it on and off. So what it does is you can hook a power wire into this corner and this corner, and then if a certain condition is met, it will engage. So it's a way of turning machines on and off directly with power rather than by controlling the flow of the goods. And this, I've actually never messed with. It's just the speaker, and you can use it to make noise. <laughs> don't ask me. I don't know. <laughs> just wanted to put it in there for completeness, and I'll probably send all of those through the, uh, the reverse factory since I'm not really going to use them, since I don't really know how <laughs> they work very well. I mean, I've tried messing with them, but not very successful. But the thing we do want is these deciders. So let's make, we need to have a decider for each light. And basically what the decider is going to do is to determine when the light is going to turn on and off. Because you can have a light right here and tell it to be on or off. So we can say if we have well, let's say more than 50. Jibble light, the light turns on. We could see it works like that just fine. But one thing I want to do is make these colors, because a white light, like we have lots of white lights in this factory. They're all white. And that's not really very user friendly. And unfortunately, the light's always going to be white. But we can send it through one of these combinators here. And the combinator can change the color of the signal. So let's put our four lights right here. And then we need to power all of this stuff. Probably something like that. 
So this is like our level, our level indicator. So if we have, and there's lots of complicated ways to do this, I'm just gonna do it the simple way. But basically, at a very low level, this thing will engage and make this light, let's say red, to say, uh-oh, you better fill up the tank soon. This one's gonna engage when it's somewhere in the middle. And let's say, I don't know, yellow. And these other two are gonna be green. And that's for level being high. So we're gonna see a series of green, yellow, and red lights. So based on what lights we still see will tell us how low it is. Now we could, you know, uh, program this so all the lights are green, like four greens, three greens, and then two yellows and like one red. But uh, that's probably more trouble than it's worth. You certainly could do it. It's just, it makes this whole setup bigger. And I'd rather this be simple and easy to do. Um, I'm looking at it right now and I'm thinking it might be better to have the power pole over here just for ease of use. So it's a little spaced out, but... So let's wire it up. Well, the signal wire is going to come in from here and to the power pole first. And I'm doing it to the power pole so I can make this a, uh, a convenient blueprint that we can use elsewhere. Now see how there's arrows on these things? That shows the direction of the signal. So this is the input signal, so we want it to be on the arrow pointing in. So from here to in, and then we can just jump this across all of them. Also, consequently, you could do this too, where it comes down from the wire individually. It just depends on what you like the look of more, I guess. It, it's functionally the same. So you can do that if you want it as well. And then the output, we could use green, but there's no reason. The reason why there's two different wires is so you can have two different signals. So each pole, you see, has a, a space in the middle for a copper wire, and then a space on one side for red, and a space on one side for blue. So it basically means that any given pole could have two signals and a power wire. And when they're different colors, they don't cross their signals. Normally, if you have two signal sources on the same wire, they will combine their signals. So let's say you have a signal coming from one silo that says 12K and another silo that says 8K, and then you hook both of those wires into one pole, the pole will say 20K as the signal. It'll add them automatically. So basically, we just can use some red. And we definitely don't want to cross these because each one of these is going to use its own logic. So the first one to activate is the bottom one. And we want to think, what level indicator is this going to be? Like, what do these lights stand for? I would say, how about the top one be 75% to 100% filled? And then this one can be 50 to 75%. And then how about this one be perhaps 25% full? And this one like 10%. So let's let's try to wire that in. So this one, they're all going to look at the Jivalite ore. But let's see, the total capacity of this thing, when it's filled with Jivalite, it's, get out the calculator, 200 and 256 slots, and each stack is 200 ore. So that's, uh, yeah, 51,200. So let's say, let's multiply that by 0.75. So 38,400. So we want this top light to activate if we have more than 75% full. So it's going to turn on only if the Jivalite is more than 38,400. Now, the reason why we have these here is because we can control the output. We can say the output is one and if you come over here, you have signals. And you could have a, any kind of signal you want. You can say, one mud, <laughs> or anything. But with light specifically, if you use a color signal, you can make the light become the color of the, of the signal. And I think that only works with color signals. So let's say green. So if we have more than 38,000, it'll send one green square to this lamp. And then the lamp, will enable if we have 
basically a green square that's greater than zero, or you could say is equal to one. See, it's, see right now the light's on because the signal is zero. You could do it any way you want. I suppose that greater than one might be more foolproof, but whatever. And then you can say use colors. And then when you do that, it's going to change colors of the green signal. So let's just make this zero to show you what it would look like. Okay, it's not working. Oh, that's because there's no actual signal. There's no signal, so that's why, like, when signal equals zero, in other words, it doesn't exist, turn on. So fortunately, that's not going to work. But that's how it would work. So let's change these other ones. We can kind of just copy them, since they're similar but different. So we want this light to be on if we have more than 50%. 256 times 200, so 51,200 times 0.5. So if we have more than 25,600 output one green square, and then that one would be on. And this one is going to activate if we have more than 25%, so 25 to 50%, this one would activate. And 25% is 12,800. And see, now it's working. But we want the signal to be different because it's kind of a warning signal. So let's make it yellow. And now we need to change this to react to yellow. And there we go, we have a yellow light. And then this bottom one, we kind of want the low level alarm, like how low... So you have to consider the logic, like if we say this one will activate only if we have 25% or less, then it won't be on when any of these other lights are on. I kind of like the idea of all the lights turning on sequentially. Let's say 10% is the low level. So that's uh, 5,120. and activate the red signal. And make this one activated with the red signal. And then there we go. So it, based on how you set this, it's gonna take a while to get used to what the signals mean, but it's not that important what the exact number is. The importance is, is just that we don't have to hover over this to see how much we have. We can know at a glance, well, it's kind of, we need to kind of pay attention to this, but it's not critical. But now that we have those set up, we could apply that to other storage chests. And this is actually going to be a permanent design. So let's get a blueprint book. Oops. Stick it in our inventory. And get a blueprint as well. Select it. Then there it is. And let's change the icon to make it more sensible. Yeah, how about the symbol for that, and then a light. So it shows that it's kind of a warning, and then maybe a storage thing, warehouse. Although it might be easier if we didn't have that. Yeah, that might work. That might make sense. And we save it. And then we can open up the blueprint book and throw it in there. And now it's inside the book. So, let's apply that elsewhere. Yep, oh, so that's caught up. So you see how it's running a little bit and then stops? Because we have just slightly more, eight more than 10,000. And then as that goes down, it runs a little bit. Just to catch it up, and then it stops. And that's how that works. So let's come up here. Now we can place our little light signals right there. Of course, we're short on all the things we need. We need a couple more combinators. And the reason why I put that power pull there, even though it technically might not have been necessary, even though in this situation it was, did I put all the power pulls? Yep, there we go is so it's easy to wire up, that all that stuff is already wired, that all we have to do is wire the signal into it. And it's a little monotonous, but we'll just have to come through here 
and switch each one of these to crotinium to have the same effect. So this one is between 50 and 75% full. So that's definitely better than the other one, but good enough. Um, basically, this kind of signaling is good for anything that we need to hand deliver, because then it just gives us an idea on when we need to go get stuff. Probably the last thing would be wood. We don't often look at it, but it would be nice signal to have, although we would never fill this thing up all the way. It still might be useful to have some similar signal. So let's put it down. Yeah, might as well put it on the right since that's where we're putting the other stuff. So we need four lights, four combinators. Now another interesting thing is that it doesn't require any red wires to place red wires. Oops, we need the... Like, the when you put signal wires down, you don't actually have to consume them. Like, the robots just automatically wire things up, so it's kind of interesting. In the same way that you can custom wire cables, uh, power cables, it manually wires everything up. So, let's set this to wood. Where exactly is wood stored, anyway? Okay, there we go. Wood. Wood. And then we need to determine how should these lights be set up. I don't know, it's kind of obligatory, but let's say 200 wood. That's pretty low. Oh yeah, we actually need to uh, wire it in. There we go. That if we have 200 wood, that'll light up. And maybe 500 wood? There's a low level there. I would say if we have... Maybe at least a thousand. We'll get a green and then maybe five thousand for extra full. So there's that. Looks good. Although after thinking about it, I kind of would like this to be a little more uh, awesome. Basically where the colors were green and they didn't change until you were low. I'm going to mess with that a little bit off camera and see if I can quickly figure it out and if not I'll just move on okay I'm back I uh, took about 10 minutes kind of messing around with this and uh, here's what I've come up with it uh, I was getting really complicated with it and I mean you can but it just requires lots and lots of these things at least from my basic understanding of how the circuit network works to program something but here's a new programming I've done but uh, let's get more resources to fill this silo up because we're not going to really be able to test it in full unless we can uh, fill the silo all the way. So let's get some more Jivalite. Hopefully this... I just changed the way the network works a little bit. Hopefully it's slightly more um, user-friendly. Because one problem with the other design is that you always see red and yellow lights, which... Um, they really should be warnings, not something that you see all the time. So, let's pick up some more resources and see if it works. Whoa! Oops. <laughs> Fell asleep at the wheel. Oh, those not set? No, I guess they were. Now, since we already have... Uh, some amount inside the uh, silo. I'm not going to pick up all the chests worth. Just hopefully that's not too much. Well, at the end, of, well, if it's too much, we can just stick it inside the uh, the truck and wait for the silo to empty. Is fuel doing all right? Oh yeah, it's fine. Okay, here we go. Don't want to crash into anything. All right, looks like I might have to... Is that all gonna fit? Not quite. So, as it is before, when all the lights are lit, it means we have at least 75%. So, it says at least 38K, it lights the top green light, 
And this one, we have more than 38k lights atop green light, so that's the same. So as we take resources away, if we are above 50 but below 75, this one activates. And it activates by saying we have at least 25k, which is half. And that's how this one works as well. And again, it's green light, so it's like... I guess I'll empty some more. So that's the part. I guess I must have mistuned this because it's supposed to be on. So at least 25k. Okay, so this one should be less than 25k. So it's uh, 25,600. There we go. So if we have less than half, the yellow light turns on, which means we're fine, but we're fairly low. So as we take resources away, now we have the red light turns on because the red light is set to say if we have less than 10%. I guess I could make this 25% to have it be an even jump. 12,800. So if we have less than 12,800, that one stays lit. So right now we have uh, 4,900. So the idea is, is that the yellow light's always going to be on, but you see the red light, which means we're really low and we need to make some kind of take some kind of action to filling the silo up. And then when we do, the red light turns off, which means we're fine. We're somewhere between 10% and 50%. While this one will still show the red light, which is kind of confusing. And then once we're above 50%, the yellow light turns off and the green light is on, which means good. While this one shows the green light up here. Then when we're above 75%, we get two green lights. And this one has all the lights being lit. So I think that method is slightly more user friendly than the other one. So I'm going to uh, switch those out real quick. So let's uh, get the blueprint. We'll have to take the blueprint out, I believe, to delete it. Start over. Select that. Uh, I believe it was warehouse and light. Looks good. And then we can put it back in the blueprint book. So remove, remove, remove. Though I put the light on the other side, does it matter? I don't know. It's a little weird putting it like that, but it might work just fine. So there we go. Let's uh, replace the other ones real quick with a similar function. Switch these over to Crotinium. There we go, so at a glance we know we're pretty good on Crotinium. And we don't have any distracting yellow lights to... Yellow or red lights to bring our attention. We just see a green so we know we're good, ignore it. Probably be nice to do the same thing for wood real quick. Although I believe we had these uh, set up in kind of a... different way. I think it was... 200 wood. And then this was like uh, 600 wood. Then this was if we had more than a thousand. I believe this one was 5,000. So there we go. Nice at a glance. Sorry about the uh, trial and error there, but uh, like I said, I'm not very good with circuit networks, so I could do some basic stuff, but then when it starts getting getting cutesy, like making little level indicators like that, I can be uh, a little <laughs> a little bad. That's all the time we have for today, so I'll see you at the next episode.